The impact here of the civil war in Syria now and expatriates with relatives caught in the conflict are urging Britain to intervene. Some told us that last week's alleged use of chemical weapons will be the first of many if the West stands by. Well, volunteers shocked by television pictures of the dead and dying have been organising collections of emergency aid in cities, including Birmingham, as Holly Lewis has been finding out. The shocking images of the youngest victims of an alleged chemical attack have prompted political soul-searching across the globe. Abdul Saeed Omar is in Wolverhampton, but his grandparents live a few streets away from the scene in Damascus. He says removing Assad is the only hope for his people. What I am sceptical against is this notion of giving Assad a slap in the wrist, as any such move will neither weaken him nor will it decrease the amount of bloodshed in the country. Volunteers in Birmingham were moved by the TV pictures to take part in a special aid collection this weekend. This pub in Moseley is one of three drop-off points for emergency supplies. The list of requirements is quite specific. Baby essentials and non-prescription medication, basic items that mothers in Syria just don't have access to. I think people really look at these Syrian children and look at these refugees with nowhere to go and with war going on around them and people want to do something. They really want to help, which is great. We're really, really, really excited and grateful for all the stuff that people are bringing to us already. Psychiatrist Dr Issam Ghanam from Solihull has recently returned from helping in Syria. He says the scale of the humanitarian crisis is unimaginable. You can't tolerate all the suffering, no matter how strong you are. And I think I'm strong, and people, you know, say that. But, but really, it hits you so hard to see the suffering. Whatever the military options, Syrians and charities in the region want to make sure no one forgets the civilians whose lives have been devastated by the struggle. Holly Lewis, BBC Midlands Today, Birmingham. Well, of course, Parliament's been recalled and a debate's going on about whether British forces should join any military strikes against the Syrian regime. BBC Coventry and Warwickshire's political reporter, Sean Grezchek's at Westminster for us right now. What have MPs been telling you, Sean? Well, Nick, there's a real divide here between those MPs who are feeling very cautious about not rushing into anything and those that feel, well, actually, something does need to happen now. I'm joined by the Labour MP for Birmingham, Edge Baston, Gisela Stewart. Where do you stand on military action, Gisela? I think we've got to make sure that whatever we do does not make things worse for the people in Syria and, even better, actually improves their life. And at the moment, I don't think we've either got the international agreement nor enough facts to make that military decision. That doesn't mean at some stage we won't have it, but right now I think it is too early and it is premature. Well, what would it take then? If you look at uh, the weapons inspectors which are there at the moment, you gather more of that evidence, you gather a much greater understanding of how you can stop them from using chemical weapons. Because at the moment, if you'd listen to the debate today, to reduce the entire stock of the chemical weapons would literally require thousands of soldiers on the ground. Now, nobody's talking about this. We're working on the assumption that you can surgically airstrikes and that people on the ground will be able to tell the difference between them just being chemical or fueling a fire. And having seen too much, whether it's Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, or even Libya, this is a civil war where, if we're not careful, we will inflame the situation rather than help anyone. Isn't there a fear, though, uh, that you're being too cautious here and you know, people have already died, the Syrian people are suffering? Something needs to happen now, doesn't it? They are indeed, and that's why what we do must actually help them. And whilst we were quite clear that we will not allow Russia to determine British foreign policy, I do think, even if Russia is reluctant to do anything at the UN Council, we need to go back to the UN and see and try whether we can, can't do better. And, and just briefly, I mean, what are your constituents back in Birmingham saying to you about this? I have to say, overwhelmingly, that all the emails I've received have been on the side of caution, saying be really, really careful because you're fueling a already very instable and volatile situation. OK, Gisela Stewart, thanks very much indeed for sharing your thoughts this evening. And, of course, that vote takes place at 10 o'clock tonight, and then we'll wait to see what happens next. Sean, thank you. Indonesia.